On today's show, first look at the all-new Honda Accord, Tesla's Model S takes yet another top honor, and how to upgrade a Hyundai Sonata. All that and more coming right up on AutoLine Daily. This is AutoLine Daily for July 29th of 2015. Honda's making a big push with new products this year. First, it was the small crossover, the HRV, followed a couple of months later by the eight-passenger Sport Utility Pilot. Last week, we got our first look at the refreshed 2016 Accord. Yesterday, we got a chance to drive it. Though driving impressions are still under an embargo, we got one of Honda's executives to talk about the new styling of one of the best-selling mid-size cars in the market. Well, for the 2016 Honda Accord, we have a lot of new additions. One thing we wanted to focus on was styling. We have a completely new look for the, for the Accord. It has a new grill, new front fascia, new rear fascia. Uh, we have LED lighting that's incorporated throughout the light dump. LED daytime running lights, LED fog lights, and LED tail lights as well. Another key addition to the 2016 Honda Accord is the addition of Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. We have a 7-inch display audio screen and with that the connectivity offered through Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. This is a great addition for the Accord. We'll have more on the Accord including a demo on Apple CarPlay coming up soon on Daily. And by the way, the car goes on sale in mid-August. It can be difficult to find time to run over to the dealer for something as simple as a software update, but now Hyundai is letting you take care of that yourself. 2015 Sonata owners that have the navigation package can now update their system to include Android Auto for free and from the comfort of their own home. You just register at the My Hyundai Owner site to download the software onto a USB drive, then plug it into the port on your car and the rest pretty much takes care of itself. There's a step-by-step how-to video on YouTube, and it will take about an hour to complete. Oh, and if you don't feel comfortable doing it yourself, you can always take it to the dealer, where they will do it for free. Coming up next, man, is that Tesla Model S popular with its owners. Auto Line Daily is brought to you by Bridgestone Tires. Your journey, our passion. Dow Automotive Systems, breakthrough technologies for lightweight vehicles, and by Hyundai. Learn more at Hyundai.com. Five years ago, Daimler and Renault-Nissan signed a joint venture to work together, and now they're really putting their money where their mouths are. They're investing $1 billion to build a new plant in Mexico to produce compact cars for both Infiniti and Mercedes-Benz starting in 2017. The plant will initially produce about 230,000 vehicles a year, but it could ramp up after that. And while Sergio Marchion says that joint ventures do not produce the kind of cost savings that he wants for FCA, JVs are becoming more and more common. I mean, who would have ever thought that you'd see Mercedes Benzes and Infinities rolling down the same assembly line? Hey, can't wait to try out a different set of wheels? Well, some drivers cannot wait to buy the same car all over again. Consumer Reports surveyed 350,000 car owners to see which ones would love to buy the same one again. Not surprisingly, four Porsches made the top 10 list, with 91% of Cayman and Boxster owners saying they'd buy another. Other performance and muscle cars like the Chevy Corvette and Dodge Challenger had 95% and 86% of their buyers salivating at a new one. Diesels, like the Mercedes-Benz E250 Bluetech and BMW 328D, had 88 and 86% of their buyers giving the thumbs up. And in the middle of all that was the Chevy Volt with 85% approval. But the king of all buybacks was the Tesla Model S. A whopping 98% of its buyers said they'd have another. And way at the bottom of the totem pole is the Nissan Versa, with only 42% of its buyers saying they'd want to get into another. Hey, coming up next, it's time for You Said It. True love will find you in the end. 
Bye, Dad. When you're committed to the job, your tires can't be weak in the knees. Let him go. Durable, dependable Firestone tires. Whatever you drive, drive a Firestone. There's more car news and industry insight from the AutoLine Network every day. Take a moment to click that subscribe button. You'll never miss another AutoLine episode. And now it's time for some of your feedback. A lot of you were as amazed as we were to see that a fuel cell car will pump 10 gallons of water through the exhaust pipe for every tank full of hydrogen. And you had some ideas of what to do with all that water. Rob says, how about a fuel cell lawnmower? Then you can cut the grass and water it too. TC says, how about adding a refrigerated drinking water system to fuel cell cars? But Klen Sarabski wants to know, how much water does a car's AC dump out on the roads? And you know, that's a great question. How much water does come out of the air conditioning? Anyone out there have an answer on that? Carman heard our report that the Viper might go out of production in 2017. He says, I don't care if the Viper is no longer made. I have a 2014 Viper TA and would love to see that price go through the roof. <laughs> Whatever. Our segment on whether classic cars should be fully restored or simply preserved generated a ton of comments. XA351 GT kind of summed it up nicely. It's really an individual thing per car. If you have an all original car, it's best to keep it that way. If you have a car that's been modified from original or in serious need of repair, then by all means, restore it. Joe Kernis wrote in to say, the Volt Forum lit up discussing whether or not the Gen 2 Volt will have a universal garage remote, aka Homelink. A forum member said that John McElroy has confirmed with Chevy that it will have garage door functionality. Can you go back to your Chevy rep and ask them to be more specific? Once again, the Chevy rep says the new Volt will have home link. Remember, all anyone has seen so far is a pre-production prototype. So just because it does not have home link does not mean the production version will not have it. Elias Germa Tesfaye wants to know, is Ford considering readying the Ranger to barge it over the pond? What, you mean import it to the United States? Not a chance. Any pickup that's imported would be hit with a 25% import tax, and that would make the Ranger completely uncompetitive. And finally, Greg Helton writes in to say, I love AutoLine's great info, guests and discussions, but could you throw in a hot chick on occasion, you know? <laughs> what? What? You don't like the way that I look? <laughs> hey, thanks for all your letters and comments. Some of them are a lot of fun to go through. Anyway, that wraps up today's report. Thank you for watching, and we'll be right back here again tomorrow.